Hello everyone, Owl here, and welcome back to Up All Night Rumination. This is going to be session four. I honestly, still once again, have no idea how long this game is, but I accidentally hit start instead of load again. Son of a... Okay, here we go. Uh, quick recap. Um, our boss is strangely interested in us. Uh, Nick is probably dating our daughter. And Nick almost certainly was Cat! Not that- wait, you were in here the whole time? Oh. Hi, Cat. My cat was here. I didn't realize that. I thought... And Nick is almost certainly a vampiric thrall. So let's just get back into it, shall we? Session 4. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I know he's supposed to be doing some sort of teenage rebellion thing. Once again, boots on my white sofa. But the only time I've ever seen people in this this position were in um very adult situations. Uh, if you need me to explain it to you, um, I'm not going to. It was a little earlier in the day than usual, but Nick had called and asked for a last minute session. He was hanging off the couch, looking at me upside down. There was a nervous energy about him, somewhere between excitement and anxiety. Ah, yes, that's how I live every day. It's not fun. I need advice. Has something happened with your friend? Yeah, but that's not it. I think we're both on the same page about things now. It's just, uh, we're not sure what to do about this. We? Yeah, my new girlfriend, she knows about this problem too, and we're not sure what to do. So what is this problem you're having? He let out a deep sigh, ruffling a hand through his upside-down hair. I just found out about someone that did a horrible thing a long time ago. Something that hurt people years later. What do I do about it? I'm going to need more detail than that. Well, what they did... It changed someone. Made them different from who they were before. But I don't think I can prove it. The person they changed, she's dead now. Because of what happened. Your friend Bree... What? No, 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 not her. Someone else used to know. So let's just say she was bitten. Uh, by a werewolf? Wait, was Felix a werewolf? Granted, I did this playthrough like two years ago. Have I been fucking up this whole time? I could have sworn he was a vampire. Okay, I'm pretty sure that Felix was in fact a vampire. So... Oh, what if he's using this to cover and be like, Uh, vampire's too obvious. I mentioned that in the last session. Let's talk about werewolf. You know, let's just go through the story. It'll be explained to us as we go. All right. Uh, I looked at him, the disbelief plain on my face. Vampires last time and now werewolves. What's gotten into you? It's a metaphor, I guess. Just humor me, okay? All right, buddy. Okay, okay. That can be a helpful way of working through things. This person, they bit her. And because of that, she she wanted to die, because she could hurt people. But but the first werewolf, the one who infected her, they're still out there living their life. I don't know what to do. There's nothing you can do. Go to the authorities, see if they can investigate and find something. But this is not your battle. What if I want it to be? The only thing you'll succeed in doing is destroying yourself. Nick, it's not worth it. Focus on your life, your new girlfriend. Don't go looking for old wounds. You have enough of them. Yeah, Nick, not to be that guy, but... I don't exactly trust you to successfully carry out a, a revenge plot. I mean, plot armor and all, I still don't... Re like, is this the guy you really want, like, leading the revenge cause against you? I, no. I remember the conversation I had with my boss. That the death of Nick's two friends might not be the only tragedy he has been involved in. Remind him of his future. Let's be let's be hopeful and, op and optimistic. I don't think you've opened up to me on everything yet. Whatever else there is, we can bring it up and explore it over time. Many, many sessions and lots of money later. Don't let these past things eat away at your future. But that's not what this is about. Eh, not right now. Right now I need to decide what to do about this person. This person who could keep hurting people. Nick, you're in no place to handle this. You're wearing the same clothes you've been wearing for the past three freaking years. You are not okay. I'm the only one who can handle this. Yeah, yeah, and Anakin Skywalker is the only one who can bring balance to the galaxy. Nick, no. Here's some drugs. No, I don't care if you don't want to take them. Wait, I got... 
Here, see Nick? See this Nick? Nick, I want you to take this entire bottle and just, just swallow about half of it and then take a long nap. Tell me how you feel after that, buddy. He was sweating and angry, body shaking, knee sweaty mom spaghetti. This wasn't going anywhere good. Why don't we focus on self-improvement? Letting these thoughts of a vengeance consume you isn't going to help anything. Forget it. I know why I thought you'd be able to help with this. Yeah, why, why, Nick, that's a good question. Why did you think that your therapist would be able to help you with a revenge plot? Please, explain your logic. You, you tried to sleep with me in the last episode, now you're trying to get me to commit murder. Like, Nick! Craigslist! Use it! He wasn't listening to anything I was saying anymore, and I had that distinct helpless feeling of being ignored that had so consumed my life in the past. I said nothing as he stood up and walked out. This was my mistake, not yours. I know you're just doing your job. I just thought you might be able to give me some real-world human advice. My mistake. About revenge? About killing werewolves? Nick, why would you think I'd be able to give you real-life advice about how to deal with killing people and werewolves? What the fuck? The words stung, and the door shutting felt like a slap to my face. I sat there in silence, unmoving until the buzzing of my phone brought me back to present. Oh god, is it my boss again? Priv- Ah, It's probably our ex. Oh my god. Exes suck. They really do suck. All my exes suck. They suck. Hey, if you're my ex and you're watching this, you suck. The unlisted number was calling again. I felt the overwhelming urge to ignore it, but Dr. Lavalette's voice echoed in my head. I didn't need to get another call about how I was shirking my duties and wasting time. Patricia Rathburn, licensed family therapist, how can I assist you? Ah, good of you to finally answer, Mrs. Rathburn. I've been trying to speak with you for a... Uh... Well, I guess it's been a few months. Detective Russell Fletcher, please to finally catch up with you. Ah, he's one of those detectives. Well, getting a listed number might help with that. I did leave messages, if you don't mind me saying. I think that's a pretty good sign I wanted to call back. I have no interest in listening to messages from unknown people, peasant. Seems like a bad way to run a business. Our facility has a front desk. I'm not ignoring anyone. My irritation with him was growing. I didn't want to have this conversation in the first place. My head was spinning with all that Nick had told me. Well, what I wanted you to discuss was your past relationship with the Nash family, along with your current one of Mr. Nicholas Torres. I hardly see how those two things are related. He was at Ashburn Lodge the night of the murders. I think that's pretty related. Yeah, um, in my playthrough, Nick, uh, may have shot Casey. I know it doesn't have to happen, but in my version, he... We, we were aiming for, like, Felix, and Felix was like, Mind the powers! And we're like, oh, sorry, Casey. Boom! And so that, that, that happened. It was a bit awkward. She was upset. She didn't die instantly. She basically said us, told us to go fuck ourselves, and then she died. So, you know, could have been worse. Could have been worse. Well, what? What? He was at Aspen Lodge when the Nash family died. I hate to tell you this, but yeah, he was. The kid's been lying to you. No, 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 no. He has been lying. He's just been obscuring certain truths, quoteth the Mel Gibson. I hardly call a 25-year-old a kid. He chuckled, voice raspy and cold. Sorry, first time I met him, he was still 18. Still think of him that way, but that's not the issue at hand here. Surely it's just a coincidence. I can understand he's not wanting to talk about- Mrs. Rathburn, I found you through Nick. I decided to take a closer look at his recent activities, and retracing those movements led me straight to you. Awful big coincidence, don't you think? He's a man obsessed. From what I can tell, he's no Grayson for a single day, but he spends years until tracking down pieces of her knife. I just can't believe he wouldn't know who you were. Everything he was saying was filling me with a sick uneasiness. If he had known who I was from the beginning, that I had known the Nash family, that would mean, oh god, Katie! Yes, yeah, something we figured out two episodes ago. Yes, your daughter has been less than forthcoming about it, but I have reason to believe he's made contact with her. The words from our first meeting rang out in my mind. What did you say her name was? Katie. He had my last name already. Looking her up would have been easy. I had a sick feeling in my gut about who his unnamed friend was. No, he said they'd started dating. My head swimming, but Detective's next words were like a garbled mess to me. But what I really want to know, 
uh, from you is what Gracie was like when she was younger. I hung up the phone. Not now. I had to make sure Katie wasn't... But she hadn't been... The blocked number popped up again on my screen, but I ignored it. A text pinged. Please call me back when you get the chance. A second ping, and his phone number showed up in the next message. I sent Katie a message, heart pounding in my throat. I couldn't talk to her right now. If I did, she'd be able to hear the trembling in my voice. Are you dating anyone new? What's his name? Lol, so curious all of a sudden. Yeah, his name is Eric. Why? It's no big deal. Just started dating. Can I meet him? Uh, you said over a month of dating? So, no. Not yet. I let out an exasperated sigh. I had told her that. Well, as long as the man she was dating wasn't named Nicholas Torres... Dude, he's using an alias. I guess I could wait a few more weeks to see if he was a keeper. Yeah, yeah, that... Patricia, that seems like a bad idea. Session 5! Oh wow, that one was kind of quick, but a lot of shit happened there. Alright, so, yeah, no, Katie's, Katie's dating Nick. Nick's insane. Uh, people are still getting moited. Fletcher's obnoxious, but if all he wants to ask us is about Grayson's childhood, all right, fine. So I think I think things are coming to a head, and I'm pretty sure our daughter is going to get murdered because I'm just so good at getting the bad endings. <sighs> Anywho, so that was session four. So thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you saw, like, share, and subscribe anyway, you dinguses. Love you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.